So now that we've established the idea of what a genetic code is, the idea of a nucleotide triplet, and the idea of the degeneracy of the amino acid code, and the idea of the language of the amino acid code and the genetic code overall, let's continue and sort of finish our discussion on the genetic code by entitling this next flowchart genetic code 2, and we'll conclude the genetic code through this flowchart. So, what else do we need to understand about the genetic code? Some specifics, okay? A little bit of memorization that we have to get through. Um, we have to understand that there's going to be a start codon. In order for protein synthesis to happen, in order for gene expression thus to happen, you have to have a start codon. You have to have a word that's going to tell the ribosome, hey, let's get amino acid sequences started. Let's start making amino acid sequences. Let's start making proteins. And in order to do that, you're going to use the word that has this arrangement. It's called A, U, and G. It's always A, U, and G. We're going to state that this is going to be what marks the start of protein synthesis, protein synthesis for ribosome. So the ribosome needs a, a go-ahead signal, and that go-ahead signal to start making a protein is to read AUG. And if it reads AUG, it's going to be coding for a specific amino acid. AUG, just like every other triplet word language code that mRNA has, codes for a specific amino acid, just like we stated in our sort of rules of the language. And in this language, AUG will always code for, or usually always code for, as long as there's no mutations or problems, which we'll actually learn about, will always code for um, methionine. So usually, always, I know that sounds a little counterintuitive, usually always, but we can't consider it 100% because of the possibility of mutations, usually always methionine, okay? So what I would understand and sort of really um, overall get is that AUG means methionine, means start protein synthesis. We have to do this. Once we've done that, we can then continue through the rest of the codes. Well, if there's a start codon, then of course there has to be a stop codon. And there are actually three that you need to memorize. Let's write them down over here. So what about the stop codon? So there are three stop codons. Um, one start codon, three stop codons. You should probably memorize these. They are U, A, and A. They are U, A, and G, and they are U, G, and A. So they all start with U, so that's not too hard to remember. And then we have some differences in the middle. So now, again, I want to remind you and sort of figure out why are there only three letters? Because the language of the mRNA code, of the genetic code, is three letters that will result in a word. But interestingly, and this is where we get the sort of uh, nuance of biology, these stop codons actually do not code for any word. They do not code for any amino acids. That's why they are stop codons. They actually tell the ribosome, hey, once you read these three letters, you actually don't need to put another amino acid on. We're done here. Let's let go of this amino acid sequence and let um, whatever's supposed to happen to it, which we'll learn, happen to it. And specifically, we can sort of write this out in words by stating that these three are three triplet codes, these stop codons, will trigger the termination. They trigger termination, they trigger the stopping of protein synthesis and thus gene expression of protein synthesis. And this is an important fact. We do not, absolutely do not code for amino acid. UAA, UAG, and UGA do not code for an amino acid because you want to end protein synthesis, so you end it by not putting any more amino acids on this amino acid structure, this amino acid sequence, by reading UAA, UAG, or UGA. Once the ribosome reads this, it's not going to put on another amino acid because neither of these code for an amino acid. So whenever you have UAA, no amino acid. UAG, no amino acid. UGA, no amino acid. Well, how does that make any sense? Well, of course it makes sense because they are stop codons. If you don't want to continue protein synthesis, might as well stop putting on amino acids. That's exactly what happens. 
In addition to this idea of start and stop codons, what about the middle? You know, when the, this ribosome is going through this mRNA sequence, this code, this language, it actually needs to follow the correct reading frame. So we need a correct, what is known as reading frame. Need correct reading frame. And now this gets a little confusing, but I think the example that I'm going to give will really drive home this point. So we need a correct reading frame, meaning that codons must be grouped properly. Codons must be grouped properly. Now what does that mean? Now we know that codons have to be in what arrangement? They have to be in a nucleotide triplet, meaning three letters, which will result in one amino acid, always one amino acid. So let me give you an example of a reading frame, and then I'm going to give you an example of a faulty reading frame, and you're going to see the big problem when you don't have a correct reading frame. So this is a very um, simple example that is not biological, it's just going to drive home a point. The example is the following simple sentence, okay? It's going to be three letters. The, this is not what's seen in the ribosome, but watch what happens when I mess up the reading frame. The cat ate the rat, okay? So, similarities and differences. First of all, similarity is that we have three letters in each word of this language that I just gave you. Difference, we don't have A, G, C, and U. We have many different other letters, but let's see what happens when I mess up the reading frame, okay? What I mean by the reading frame is that these codons, these three letters, have to always be arranged in this T-H-E form, and then C-A-T, and then A-T-E. Think of these words as independent words that need to be in this manner. If they are messed up, if we have a shift in the reading frame, if we have something maybe like a mutation, let me show you this mutation that'll really mess up our reading frame. What if we have a mutation that deletes first T? Okay, deletes first um, T in this sentence. The cat, the T is gonna be erased. Now you're gonna see a shift, watch this. Deletes um, first T and this is going to actually cause a shift in the reading frame. So it shifts reading frame, thus making it incorrect, and we're going to see why this really is, can be catastrophic for a protein uh, overall, and thus a cell overall. This happens a lot. It doesn't happen a lot, but happens in many mutations. So this will be a shift in the reading frame in which we are going to just get rid of the T. And what I'm going to now do is, I have to follow a rule. I can't just say H-E. I can't do that because I need to have three letters, okay? I have to have three letters. So I have to shift and sort of take this C and put it over here, meaning that the reading frame will read like the following. It will be H-E-C, because I lost the T, so now i got to take this C and read it as a part of these first three letters. It's always the first three letters now. The first three letters in this sequence were T-H-E, the. Now the first three letters, if we delete the T, are H-E-C. Now we have to skip not skip, but go to the next three letters because it's a three letter language, then it's going to be A, T, A, and then we have to go to the next three letters, T, A, T, E, T, then the next three letters, H, E, R, and then the next three letters, A, T, but we don't have any more letters uh, because we've lost the T. So now, overall, I hope you understand right now that we really, really ruined this reading frame. A simple sentence like the cat ate the rat has now been turned to heck ata tet her at. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. And this can exactly happen at the ribosome. The ribosome, when it's reading this language, if we have a deletion that causes a shift in the reading frame, in the reading frame of three letters, giving us three understandable words, if we have a shift in that, in that let's say we have a mutation that shifts the reading frame to the left a little bit, um, then we have a completely uncomprehensible language, okay? Overall from this, I want you to understand that if everything shifts, okay, let me rewrite that, if everything shifts because of a, a deletion, this is really, really bad, okay? Everything shifts, this is very, very bad, okay? And if we have a incorrect reading frame, we have an incorrect amino acid sequence, we have an incorrect protein, thus we will have a lack of function or a dysfunction in the protein. That shows you how important this genetic code is in terms of reading frame being correct. 
And in addition, this is the idea of a non-overlapping frame as well. Remember how we mentioned that in the previous video? I think this example shows you that you can't just overlap the letters. If you lose one letter and just overlap H-E with C and A-T with A, you literally change the meaning of everything into something that doesn't make any sense from something that did make sense. So now this shows that it's non-overlapping. So we absolutely need a correct reading frame. And the final thing about the genetic code I want to talk about, and something that's really, really cool to me, is that the code is universal. This is crazy to me because this simply means that the same amino acid code is used by all, and we would say like 99.9% .9 at least, all known viruses, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. We are so connected to things that aren't even living like viruses and to things that are so simple like prokaryotes and things that are so complex like eukaryotes because our amino acid code is universal. The same amino acid code is used by a virus as it is used by your mother. The same amino acid code is used as by a bacterial cell as is used by a lion. This is crazy to me because it shows us the connectivity, the overall arching like ability of everybody being connected through something like an amino acid code and thus we're all connected in the sense that we have to do transcription and translation which we're now going to get into since we've established the meaning of a genetic code.